The Transport for Wales Mark IV train configurations are a great way to build up a modestly sized contemporary train that won't break the bank. In this video I'm checking out Hornby's Mark IV coaches and driving trailer in this livery. It's time to take a closer look. Hi, thanks for joining today's review. We'll kick off with an unboxing of the driving trailer and one of the Mark IV coaches. We'll then get into our close-up reviews, our running session, and then into our summary, scoring, and final recommendation. Okay, let's get underway. Okay, so I'm gonna look at the unboxing for both the Mark IV DVT in the Transport for Wales livery. And we're gonna do the same for one of the coaches. Now I've purchased four of these coaches, I've actually purchased five. I don't have the restaurant coach at the moment, so we'll be using the four uh, other coaches for the running session. Um, but uh, we'll take a look at, at one of them here. Uh, so let's get this guy open first. Uh, let's take a look at the uh, driving trailer. That's uh, in this livery. So. Effectively, this is going to be the equivalent of the Mark IV driving trailer uh, that was available in the earlier liveries. Now, interestingly enough, this, this one comes in a 21-pin uh, DCC uh, socket on it, as you can see here. So I haven't seen a 21-pin DCC socket on a driving trailer from Hornby yet, so that'll, we'll take a look at that. So let's take them out of the box. Now, it is pretty light, actually. Um, but I guess that's uh, pretty powerful. Of course, but it's, it's even lighter than a coach, I would suspect. But I will, I will weigh this guy. Uh, so the livery looks pretty good. It looks pretty fine. The registration of the Transport for Wales logo. Uh, so all of that looks fine. There's a kind of a nice grey in the underbody. Everything is pretty well moulded. So there's moulded detail in the bogies, moulded underbody detail and pretty well moulded detail on the top, which is this painted over here, this painted piece here. So it's not the most complex model in the world. Even the handrails there are moulded. Um, do we have sprung buffers? Kind of sprung buffers. Um, they're kind of plasticky sprung buffers. There, there is a spring in there, so I guess I shouldn't complain. Um, look at our couplers there. Uh, we've got power pickups on both, so uh, bogey switch is good. So we'll see what that looks like. And then we've got a day night running switch on the bottom here um, for the lighting. The screws look to be, okay, they're flathead screws. So we'll, we'll, we will open up this model to take a look because I will want to add DCC to the model. Um, so it's pretty basic from, I guess, a detail perspective. Um, but, and that said, it's probably pretty well sufficient and giving what I paid for it, um, it's probably okay. I just hope now that the lighting is pretty good and that we don't have anything like light bleed or anything like that that we did on a previous model. So it looks a little bit rough there. You'll see that in the close-up. Okay, so it's, quality-wise, it's probably not 100%. Um, and you can definitely, definitely, there's a kind of a cheapness re regarding the fact that everything is pretty well molded on it. So this is a low cost, um, this is a low cost model. Okay, so let me just get a screwdriver. So we're going to take a look at this guy inside. Uh, four screws. Uh, I had problems with these screws on one of the Mark, Mark III. Uh, DVT before, so hopefully I don't have any problems on this one. Okay, there she goes. So, it's pretty basic on the inside there, at least there's brass inserts on the screws, which is good. But Overall, there's a pretty pretty basic in there. So let's see what we've got here. So we've got cab lights, and 
two seats there and uh, I wonder will I add a driver that's a question I mean not right now I and mean, we've got lights here which is good and we've got uh, the kind of dummy socket in there so we're going to replace that with a DCC decoder um, as I say that's the first um, 21 pin decoder I've seen on a Hornby DVT so that's new for me I suppose if, you, if anybody else has been purchasing these will have seen that already so we'll pop a decoder into that and um, we'll be using that in our in our running session so that's the DVT uh, it's pretty basic stuff it'll be interesting to see the lighting now that, that's kind of the, I guess the, the next question uh, there's a very minimal uh, detailing kit let's just get the detailing kit out of the box so we can take a look at that uh, so we've got a kind of a draw drawbar coupler which is interesting if we wanted to use that and just very basic pipe work so that's essentially what you what you get with it okay pretty basic as things go and it'll all come down to how that runs on the track and what the lighting looks like um, will be the kind of final determination on that particular model okay so let's take a, take a look at one of these mark IV coaches in this transport for wales livery which is kind of a on the, on the coaches, it's a it's kind of a hybridized livery. It's kind of taken the the original livery, LNER livery, and it's kind of overlaid on top of that. So let's get this guy out to one side. And again, we get a drawbar coupler option here, and we get the kind of Lima coupler option. I do like those couplers. I do tend to use them a lot. On my, I use them on all my Mark III stock. I think they're superior to the other couplers that the, the, the other typical standard couplers. So I'll probably I'll be swapping out the uh, the couplers on these to put those in. So let's take a look at the coach and uh, Mark IV coach. So you know, I guess this is pretty identical apart from the livery variant for to the the LNER uh, versions of this. A lot of people may have picked up. Uh, with their class 91s it's um it's a little bit rough to be honest um it's it's probably not the most immaculate coach i've ever seen um glazing is fine the smudge there which looks like a bit of glue smudge so again you know there's just aspects of quality on these that aren't 100 percent a bit of marks on the glazing um, and just that livery finish there is it is what it is I guess but it's not perfect with the scuffs on it so these are kind of rough put it that way um, I'll take a look at the other I have three others of these coaches so I'll take a look at those my assessment will be based on all of them uh, rather than just on this one um, it, it is basic uh, it's all kind of molded detail uh, that we have on this there's no separately added parts the handrails there are just picked out on uh, with with paint you know, just all parts of the mold and that's essentially what it is and uh, we've got the bulkhead there at the back and uh, we can add a little bit of detail in there but there's very little extra detail to be added um, the labeling is, is is looks pretty good and the um, the text here is very clear so nothing about that is as untoward it's just it's not the sharpest coach in the world put it that way and there's a little bits of roughness about it um that kind of wouldn't really expect on a new coach so i will take a look at the other coaches i have um but i think on a quality perspective a visual quality perspective not not great um, okay, so again, it'll come down to how this guy runs as well uh, on the track. Uh, we'll run with a rake of four of these with the DVT and a class 67. And that's, that's how we'll actually, that's what we'll go with in the running session. So kind of um, sitting on the fence on this one, we'll do a close-up view, 360 views on them. And uh, we'll see how they run on the track and then we'll get back and look at it from a scoring perspective. But my perception right now is these are a little bit rough. And uh, they're, you know, they're not the highest quality on the planet, put it that way. So I really wouldn't, I didn't pay full price for these. So 
I did get them discounted, and 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 for that reason, I'm probably not going to be uh, overly unhappy. Um, you know, so I, you know, if I had paid the full recommended retail price for these, I would not be pleased. So, but I think I did get them discounted, so about 25, 30 percent. So I think I can live with it, and uh, I similarly got the DVT discounted as well. So. I think if you're playing full price, uh, you probably wouldn't be wouldn't be pleased. But uh, playing the discounted price, I can probably live with it. Okay, let's get on with the review. Next part of the review, we'll do the close-ups. Okay, so let's get into the close-up views. So we'll start with the driving trailer. As we kind of saw in the outer box, everything here really is uh, molded. Uh, albeit it, it looks fine and the livery which is relatively bland and doesn't really, on the driving trail in particular uh, and it's kind of the same on the locomotive in this livery it doesn't have an awful lot going on and you can see a lot of the underbody there is just pretty bland molded material and it's even a little bit on the soft side as mold is obviously well used uh, was used for all the LNER, LNER stock uh, I guess it's adequate, but that's about it. There really isn't anything to write home about here. It's it's fine. It, it's serviceable, and um, and really you need to be picking it up at a price that's appropriate then for for that. That is the driving trail trailer. Nothing fatal, but as I said, it's just a little bit bland and it's it's relatively simple and from a detail perspective. Here we're seeing it in the three hundred and sixty view, uh, which is uh, probably making it look even a little bit better than it is. We've got the front uh, buffers there, which are sprung, which is good. A little bit of detail at the front there. You've got the separately fitted wipers as well, so that's to be welcomed. And the glazing looks pretty good. And there's the seats for the driver inside, which are visible. And you can see them, obviously, when you've got the lighting on. And then you've got the uh, gangway at the back there. Uh, and a little kind of de de detailing of, of a coupler that's already pre-attached. So it is... Pretty simple, straightforward, and I think, as, as I said, it's it's perfectly functional, uh, but just nothing to, to write home about from a, a kind of a visual appearance perspective. Uh, I guess that's kind of the main message here. Okay, we're going to get into the coaches now. Uh, a little bit more going on here, obviously, from a, a colour perspective and li overall livery perspective, because these are really a t taken straight from the LNER livery and just with the overlay applied for the Transport for Wales so they didn't even do a repaint they just overlaid on the uh, the branding again it, it's all molded detail here uh, the glazing is is pretty decent uh, my lighting there is probably making it look a little bit worse than it is it's 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 reasonably flush uh, and in the main it's it's fine but again everything here is as I said, it, it is uh, molded detailed. There's no separately fitted parts really happening here. And uh, it's a pretty basic livery. So we'll look at it in, in the 360 view here. Uh, I think the gangway areas look quite presentable. And again, if, you've, if you're familiar with the LNER Mark IVs, that's pretty well what these are, uh, just with that extra branding and lettering added to the sides. And, and I guess my main thing with these is they are a tad overpriced. That's the only issue. Just a, a point to note there, there's an end coach. That's the standard end coach. You only have one of those. That's the one that backs up to the locomotive. Uh, so you don't, if you're buying a rake, you don't want to buy two of those because uh, that won't work for you. So you need one of those and that's uh, that's what uh, you'll have in a prototypical rake. That'll be the first coach that's connected to the locomotive. So just to, to point that out. Uh, so, you know, these, these look pretty fine. And if you do like the appearance of the original LNER coaches, then you're probably not going to have any issues with, with these either. Uh, but again, they are pretty, pretty basic. Okay, so let's get into the running session. So I have a full running session online, uh, so I'll put a link to that in the description so you can check that out. It goes through all the usual speed levels, etc. Now, I think the first thing I want to comment on here is I'm, I'm only running this in, uh, in pull mode. I did attempt to run this in push mode. I had problems. I had derailing problems with the two sets of couplers, the, uh, both the Lima type couplers and tension locks. So I did get derailing with both of those. The distance between these coaches is quite tight, so they, they were kind of rubbing off against each other. And I tried out some uh, Acura scale uh, magnetic couplers as well, which did work very well on the straight and reasonably well, but there was a level of friction. They're probably just about a millimeter too short, which is a pity because they looked really good. And they did seem to do a really good job. 
and I didn't see any kind of derailment or issues with those, but there was friction happening and you'd notice if they see it, there was kind of a catching between the two bulkheads of the of adjacent coaches. So I really couldn't use those. So I, I wasn't able to do anything in, in, a, in a push mode here. You could use the drawbar couplers and I am using a drawbar between the locomotive and the first coach and between the DVT and the last coach. And you could use them between all the coaches, but it's just a little bit that that becomes a little bit of a pain then to to put that together, connect them like that, uh, and just makes it very messy. So you really do need appropriately sized magnetic couplers. Now that said, the running performance in the pull mode is is absolutely fine. Uh, these run really well, no issues, and you could run them an awful lot faster than I'm running them here because the, the relative resistance on those coaches is, is very small. It's only the DVT that has a bit of resistance in it. As you can see it here, absolutely no problem. So, you, you know, these are obviously designed to run behind a, a Class 91, for example. So you're going to be running them at you know, nearly twice the speed that I'm running them here. And uh, they do seem to be stable and work well at those speeds. So overall, a good running session. Uh, just to note the push mode challenges. Okay, so let's get into the summary. So we've been looking at the Transport for Wales branded Mark IV driving trailer and coaches. And there are two variants of the driving trailer and there's basically two sets of coaches and you can see the different uh, code numbers there so you could build two full prototypical trains here each with its own uniquely numbered dvt and with four coaches all uniquely numbered so uh, i think that's pretty good the running resistance for the driving trailer is actually high and that's in keeping with most of the driving trailers that come from hornby uh, they do have those extra, extra contacts for the LED power uh, on them and they are implemented in a way that just means that the running resistance is pretty high. For the coaches, the running resistance is very low. They do run very well and that's in keeping with previous Mark IV coaches and Mark III coaches from Hornby. They both come with kinematic couplers and with NEM pockets, uh, which is good and that, that's an upgrade over older Mark IV coaches and DVTs, for example. And they do come with a number of coupler options. Uh, so for the driving trailer, you get the tension lock couplers and the drawbar coupler. And I use the drawbar in the uh, running session. Now with coaches, you get the tension lock drawbar, and you also get the option of the Lima European type coupler, uh, which I tend to usually use for high speed trains like this. That works fine in pull mode, but it doesn't actually work in uh, push mode. And I think really the gap here is that it would have been useful to have an appropriate length of magnetic coupler actually included. And that could have replaced the drawbar, for example. And, and it probably could have replaced all the others because that's the only one you'd probably use. So that's the gap, main gap from a coupler perspective, and I would have liked to have seen that. The lighting on the driving trailer is pretty good. Uh, you get a, a comprehensive directional and cab lighting with a day-night switch as well, which is underneath the base. And it works well in both DC and DCC. You need, you need DCC for the cab lighting control. And the driving trailer is 21 pin DCC ready, so it is the newer uh, variant of these driving trailers. The top scale speed that I tested at was 75 miles per hour, but these are rated to run at the full rate of, uh, say, your Class 91, for example, so you could run them a lot faster. Uh, the unbox weight for the driving trailer is a pretty light 137 grams, and for the coaches, 154 grams, uh, which is more of a typical uh, weight for a coach like this. And then from a pricing perspective, uh, there is quite a variety of, in terms of pricing on these and you can see these discounted. So my advice here is definitely shop around. You'll typically see the driving trailer between uh, $64.99 and $84.99, which is the recommended retail price, which I would not recommend paying for them. And the coaches would go from $34.99 to $44.99. Again, I wouldn't be recommending that paying that particular price. And that's as of April 2023. So let's take a look at the scoring for the driving trailer first. It does have quite a high running resistance and I guess that's really the reason I'm not giving this a, a higher score. Uh, that's kind of the main issue with it, uh, but it does run well. It, I've, I've had no de derailing problems or anything like that with it and it's it's mainly just the, uh, the running resistance is on the high side. Appearance and detail, it, it is relatively bland. Uh, there really isn't any separately fitted parts etc on this, so it is one of the more bland driving trailers that you'll get. Extras and Variants does have a good lighting package and I think that's kind of the main thing here that uh, you don't have a lot of extras in terms of uh, detailing parts that you can add or anything like that. It doesn't actually include the European uh, coupler and as I said it probably would have helped to have a magnetic coupler included in this and the coaches. So again a 7 which is a reasonably decent score. Build quality I'm giving it as an 8. It does have a slightly cheap feel to it so 
that's kind of the, the reason it isn't higher. But I didn't find anything particularly wrong with it. But it does have, as I say, that kind of a cheap feel. It is probably more of an eight. And, and some people may may argue it's even a little bit less. But I, I was happy enough with it. And I think eight is a fair score. Packaging and documentation is absolutely fine because it's a very light car. So it doesn't need any particular extra protection. Uh, so the normal boxing that it comes in. And it does come with a, an information sheet, I think is pretty well satisfactory. And I, I was happy with that. Uh, price value, and I've put price value at the £75 mark because this is a typical price you'll pay for it. And it's a 7 out of 10 at that sort of price level. And, and if you can get it for £10 less than that, for example, then you're looking at you know maybe an 8 or a 9 score. I've taken it at 75 because that's what you'll typically see it being sold at from a lot of retailers. It's in the high 7s, overall 7.7. .7, and if you take the price value out of it, it's a, it's a 7.9. 7 so it, it's not a bad model. Uh, it doesn't have the light bleed problem I had on a previous Mark III a driving trailer, the Intercity one that I had. Uh, they do seem to put the extra coats of paint in there. So no issues with light bleed or anything like that. And it does run well, as I said, albeit with, the, with that running resistance. It's a very acceptable and presentable score. And, and uh, you know, I don't have any particular issues with this model. Okay, let's look at the scoring for the coaches. Slightly different here. Uh, the running performance is is a little bit better. Uh, they, they have very light coaches and they do run uh, very smoothly. So you could run massive rakes of these coaches, even with a very modest locomotive, and you wouldn't have any problems because they are very smooth and you don't tend to get any derailing. The main problem was running them in push mode. And again here, the out-of-box couplers, neither the tension locks or the Lima type couplers will work satisfactorily in push mode. You can use the drawbars, but they're fixed, so they're a little bit awkward to be using those uh, for you know any you know more than two or three coaches. And again, it would have really helped to have an out of box uh, magnetic coupler for these. And you know, I did use I did attempt to use them with uh, some of the Acura scale magnetic couplers, and on the straights they look they're absolutely fine and they look, work really well. And they would work very well on a uh, quite a, a large radius curve, but on radius three curves that didn't work for me unfortunately. So. That's kind of my main gripe on this particular one. Um, I think they could do with uh, a better a better coupler. Running performance in push mode could then be probably equivalent, and this could be a 10 score. Appearance and detail, again, it's um, yeah, while there's, these are a little, not, not as bland as the driving trailer, there was a little bit of roughness about them, and I say there really is no added detail to them. It is molded parts all the way, and a little bit of fuzziness about some of the uh, the actual paintwork. There's nothing fatal here uh, from from a, an appearance perspective. It's just it's very basic. Extras and variants, you do get all those couplers with it, and these do have a kinematic coupler on them, so you you can close couple them if you've got appropriate length couplers to do so. And and and, and if you're in push mode, as I said, only the drawbar will work, so that's kind of the main issue. Build quality is a seven. Again, nothing fatal, but there was one of the coaches that was particularly rough. And again, there's a kind of a cheap feel to these. They are what they are. And I think for that 40, 45 pound price range, they are they do have a, a kind of a cheap feel for a coach costing that kind of money. Then it's a seven score. Again, not, not fatal, but just to be aware of that. Packaging and documentation, same as the DVT, no particular issue there. And then the packaging is absolutely adequate for this type of model. And then the price value at 40 pounds, uh, which is the typical price you pay for these. Again, a seven out of 10. And again, you can get these discounted. You could be paying 34, 35 pounds for them, in which case they'd be a lot more attractive from a value perspective. And so overall, overall similar scores to what we had for the driving trailer, which probably isn't surprising. The Transport for Wales Mark IV configuration provides a means for putting together a contemporary train on a relatively modest budget and to a length that will work for smaller layouts. It also represents an excellent reuse opportunity if you already have a Class 67 in the DB Schenker red livery, negating the need for a locomotive purchase. The Hornby Transport for Wales Mark IV stock combines excellent running performance with adequate appearance and quality, meaning that it ultimately comes down to price in terms of the value proposition. The same applies to the purchase of 67014, which I haven't reviewed here which is an equivalent to pre-existing 8-pin decoder-based Class 67s that Hornby have been shipping for a number of years. Note that newer Class 67s from Hornby will be 21-pin decoder-based. At a discount level of 20% or more, I would recommend a purchase of 3-5 to five of these coaches combined with the DBT, and this is exactly what I did, which meant I was pleased overall with my purchase, despite some roughness on one of the coaches in particular. 
If you're on a small layout, you can keep it to three coaches and still be prototypical. And that's the advantage of this particular livery. So there you have it. The Transport for Wales liveried Mark IV coaches and driving trailer are in the modelling world exactly what their real world counterparts are, a refreshed livery on top of existing stock. They do run well and the ability to run them with a pre-existing locomotive means you can have a new contemporary train configuration on your layout for a very modest cost. Please share your thoughts and experience with Hornby's latest Mark IV coaches and driving trailer, be they in the LNER or the Transport for Wales livery. So thanks for joining today. Please hit a like if you found this video of use. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. In the meantime, take care and happy modelling.